Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out, out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. So John the Baptist, right, this pivotal figure in the New Testament of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this prophet who calls us to repentance and to confession, right? This pericope is full of John and, of course, leans into today, this Sunday, the first Sunday after the Epiphany and the baptism of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And yet for us in this wilderness space, for us and John, I want us to imagine and meditate with me for a little bit. Imagine John eating the locusts, the wild honey, the leather belt, the coming in with a, his loin skin, in, and walking in out of the wilderness, right? And, and then the whole people in the Judean countryside and from Jerusalem coming to him. Because in those days, of course, uh, there was always a notion of the Messiah, right? And an understanding of a Messiah-like figure, which was common in those days. And of course, this was a movement and an opportunity for people who were not Jewish or another religion to move into a new way of being. Baptism afforded that opportunity. Now, fast forward to us in 2021 in the Episcopal Church in Connecticut. We too find ourselves in a wilderness type area, right? With this COVID-19 pandemic, which has been ongoing for the past nine and a half months. We who are untethered to our own norms in terms of church life, maybe quarantining at home and keeping safe and just measuring time with our families, we too find ourselves in a wilderness space. And, and that also goes through and is very moving for our country as well, right? Who also finds itself in a wilderness place. And how do we understand John the Baptist coming to us now? What would he say? Typically in the Hebrew scriptures and also into the New Testament, we see um, these wilderness spaces being a space of God's judgment and also God's blessing. And if we understand that, that liminal space that John was walking into and the whole people in the Judean countryside in Jerusalem coming to visit him, we can also understand that for ourselves, right? The whole people of the Episcopal Church of Connecticut, maybe the church in America, all coming to hear and witness to John's words as Jesus comes after him. John calling very deliberately for what? For confession and repentance. And that deep connection between confession repentance and baptism. This new way of life, this new birthing into a new way of being in Christ can only come with confession and repentance. My friends, what I wanted to share in this season, as we move more deeply into the season of racial reconciliation, healing, um, with respect to white supremacy, anti-black bias, and and racism here in our church and our country. I want us to imagine that we are in this liminal space and we need to repent. We need to confess and to lament of the ways in which we have been tethered as a church and as individuals 
to a colonial white supremacist patriarchal system that we have paid homage to, right? It's as if we are the three kings paying homage to a system that has been death dealing, not to the God who calls us his beloved. And yet how can we get to that space and that ministry of Paul who calls us to reconciliation if we do not repent and confess? I dare say, friends, that we are in a place of judgment. For hundreds of years, we have paid homage, we have bowed down to ease. We have paid homage to an understanding of, well, let this pass, or we'll not lean into the political dispensation of the gospel because that is too hard. We have talked the talk, but we have not walked the walk politically because we're too afraid to think that the gospel might indeed be political. Well, I have news for myself and for all of us. The gospel is indeed political and it takes our hands and our feet to walk into what John is calling us into. My friends, I um, was invited by our parish minister to think about Palm Sunday and how we need to order Palms prefer Palm Sunday. And I think of how we are continually invited in our church season to move on. To move on from Christmas into the new season. Not stopping to really render and understand the message that today that John gives us. That we have to confess. We have to lament of these ways in which we have been so tethered. Our church, our institutions here in this country, the original sin of white supremacy that continues to hold us back, continues to hold us as guilty, when in fact we're in being invited into something that is more life-giving, into that new life. But what if we do not lament that? What if we do not create space for our communities to move into that life-giving work of the Holy Spirit. Imagine all of you who are watching this. What if we moved back to our parishes and created a stir by demanding that and asking that all of us move into this work, not, not believing and not understanding that this will cause some feathers to be ruffled. We don't like to be pushed. I don't like to be pushed. But isn't that the message of John today? Right? Do we not, do we not invite God's judgment God damning us for continuing to walk the other way, to turn ourselves to the most comfortable and the most pragmatic. Realizing that the prophets, from John the Baptist to Isaiah to Jeremiah to Ezekiel to Amos, have all spat on our worship. They said, had had a distaste for it if we are not doing justice. Folks, the invitation for us as American Christians, around 80% of us are American Christians, so we have allowed all of this wrongdoing to continue on for so, so long. We know in this pandemic time that the revelation, the realness of, of a system that centers white supremacy has disproportionately affected black, African-American, Latinx, and Native American communities and caused a huge distancing in inequality between rich people and poor people. Where is our moral voice to shout and to proclaim that this is anathema, this is evil? Do we not short circuit our moral voice as Christians in the public sphere when we do not walk out into this wilderness channeling John's passion, John's call for us to turn and walk in a better way. My friends, we cannot bow our heads, bury our heads, saying we do not know. We have to pray, we have to sing, and then we have to move politically 
into the ways of the realm of God. Nothing else suffices, my friends. May the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us in this way. Amen.